last game you manages to uh, put down uh, this uh, girl that was kidnapping girls and selling them to other people. You manage to rescue them and become heroes in the eyes of the uh, high wall. Um, and after doing that, you went back to house the need, uh, so uh, to rest and recover from the fight, uh, brother. Ow. You, you rested, you heal up your wounds, um, and now you have uh, some pointers that you are talking about in the in the chat. You know that some of the I, I will pay pass to the map of the lower ward. You know that in the foundation department there is this case of the we are war forced that kidnapped a boy, a girl, and that apparently um, the father of the girl say that this war forced speak as if it was uh, his deceased uh, uh, wife. And the other thing that you have uh, was that you know that Hammer is involved in buying a slave from the slave trader uh, that you uh, left to die in the in the cage in one of his cages so have that those two points um shona was talking about getting inside hammer's house uh, when he was not around and try to do check uh, if he has any incriminating papers um and emily and sliver were talking about uh, disguising themselves and attacking uh, hammer and when and the logistics of it i think we had a plan for going out after Hammer, I'm the reason I'm hesitant is because Hammer is a guard, so and I am lawful good, so I would prefer to avoid committing criminal acts. But if you think you can implicate Hammer and like starting a riot against him, then by all means, if you guys think you can pull that off, considering um, that Hammer is uh, culpable and is a, a helping the guys who are kidnapping people, I don't think that a lawfully good character would have any problem with taking him out. Oh, I have no problem with taking him out. It's just, what proof do we have of this? We could uh, go through his house. The testimony, huh? uh, you don't have proof. You have the testimony of the guy that you let the kill. Exactly. So, but I mean, the fact is, you know that you have good proof to yourself, at least. So if you guys think we can turn, like, start a riot and get people against Hammer, then by all means. But saying, but just accusing him outright, I don't think that's going to go well. No. But we don't have to do that first. He was going to return to the merchant yes. in like you a week, right? two weeks. Uh, yeah. to, if you want to prepare something and ambush him when he goes back to the slave merchant. Uh, oh. So we, we have time if we want to explore the, the the war forge who kidnapped the kid. You want to do that yes, before we, we go after Sliver? Or go after a Hammer? Uh, you um, have two weeks. You could use as you may. Uh, uh, sorry. I am interrupting you. Con All right, so we spent two, two weeks week? investigating uh, the. You will. So we spend two weeks um, investigating the one war forged, and then go back after Hammer. I or act, we wait I, with Hammer. And, oh, sorry, sorry. You go. I'm thinking that that uh, we definitely should leave Hammer for last because he's not going to be expected. The element of surprise is with his uh, to our advantage, and more to the point, since he's since he's not here, uh, this gives us the opportunity to look into Hammer's haunts. Uh, maybe if we can track down where he norm frequents, we can also we can figure out way uh, we could such as his office at or is it an office i'm guessing office office at the city yes. guard if there's a w if there's a way we can uh gain access to that whether uh, gain access to that he may have uh something incriminating that we could find at the location that way we have something to fall back on when in case our our eventual encounter with hammer goes uh goes sideways did we have any sort of leads on the laboratory. Uh, not yet, All right. actually. Mm. Uh, because, you yeah. know the fact that there has to be one. Uh, it should have uh, it should have maybe several investigators, but several uh, researchers, but you don't know where it is uh, and you haven't found any clue on that. Uh, yeah, you that... have the theory that m they may be in the book, the industrial, industrial part of the city, but but specifically where, uh, 
you'll know. Then, then my vote is to see to save Hammer for later, you know, for the last. Yeah, just it seems like it's the... easier to do that way. Yeah, Let's exactly. So, hey, didn't we say we're gonna look at where the old lab was and see if we can find anything where the new lab is? That that was yeah. also an idea, but I think we should go uh, for the time sensitive one first. It's not actually a, an old lab. The lab that that Merrick used when working with Emily, it's still operational. Uh, That's another option. I mean, he he has several labs uh, in the city uh, that the, the, that are dedicated to different projects. Okay, so the lab uh, research uh, checking out on the labs isn't uh, t- uh, isn't tied into uh, Hammer's return. Uh, so we're leaving Hammer for last. So we can here go check out the lab. We can go investigate that kit, uh, that uh, fodder story about the uh, the warlord speaking in the deceased wife's voice. Uh, or we could try and track down uh, Hammer's locations and uh, investigate those locations, try and get some dirt either on Hammer or on pos- associations with Hammer in preparation for his return. Well, I think... the labs aren't going to be a good idea for Emily because if that is the lab that Emily has been working at, people are going to recognize her. And that's going to go back straight to Merrick's. That's a, ri- that's a risk of going to uh, check out the labs for, uh, for the time being. Yeah. So, so as I say, my, my vote is on the Strange Warforged. I agree. Yeah, yeah but check that out. You know? See how that goes. Okay, so you, are, uh, you prepare yourself uh, to, to go uh, to the Foundation Apartments. Uh, as you're preparing yourself to do that, um, as you're getting out of, as you're uh, get, getting out of the uh, the needs safe house, uh, the barrack, you see a uh, a woman that approaches Harriel. Harriel, you recognize oh, Harriet, the repo- the reporter. Uh, of course, uh, of course. He looks at you uh, uh, and with a big smile says, uh, "Harriel, how are you? Greetings, Violet. How's your day going?" Oh, um. Perfect. Uh, I am actually writing about uh, your latest heroic exploits. Uh, I have. I see that you and your friends have been busy uh, rescuing the girl, the kidnapped girl from the Medusa stand. Just basic. Just some basic. Just some basic house business, that's all. Yes, yes, I see. Uh, I like... Uh... <laughs> Violet looks <laughs> at Sliver uh, and makes a small, nervous smile. Um, well, I was thinking, um, one of my friends in the newspaper uh, has some contact in one of the um, ocean views um, in one of the ocean views um, this cafe is ca- uh, cafe you uh, coffee shop so one of the best coffee shops in all of ocean view and I can get us to have something to eat there uh, without pain of course and you could tell me a little about uh, your latest adventure how does she know about that? Um, do you ask Hariel that? or uh, Kind of, uh, like, uh, under the breath? Yes, I would. Um, look, I have several contacts, and I put some of them to follow you. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, and you went to Highwall, and after that, you went to that big party that Highwall organizes, organizes on your honor. And so, after you were, you had my contacts, uh, told me that, and 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 I went to Highwall and asked and talked to several several of the refugees and some of them mentioned your name and so I am here. Uh, look, Harriel just gives a uh, a quick a quick glance towards the rest of the and uh, when she t- uh, when Harriel turns to Violet, uh, she's she's got this um, she's got the, she fixes you fixes Violet with the biggest polite smile you can possibly think of yes it's actually kind of uncharacteristic of of harriel but she's got that look and she says to violet we are i i think i can speak for everybody here where uh when i say that we greatly appreciate your very grand offer 
treating us to a very quaint lunch in o in Oceanside. Uh, but I have I, I think we have to decline. Uh, there are other matters that we are uh, that we are have been called upon to take care of, which involves us leaving very very uh, quickly. Time is of the absolute essence. Oh, in that case, um, let's see. Uh, will you be free? Uh, let's say tonight or maybe tomorrow, whenever, whenever, whenever you are available. Oh, it, you know what? The, you know what? Several days from now, uh, several days from now, uh, the Church of the Silver Flame that I'm uh, that I'm currently working with is going to be having ourselves. It's going to be having the uh, weekly soup kitchen where we go down to we're here to look uh ish, wait are we we're not in the lower wards we're back at um we're back at uh home base yes uh, you are getting out of the home base and she was waiting outside gotcha. okay uh the local chapter the silver flame is going to be having their weekly soup kitchen down the lower ward uh, if you, if and we and we have to get up so early in the morning in order to help out those make sure they have a wholesome breakfast because times are tough yes they are definitely tough so uh, yeah in that case i could catch up with you and help you in the soup kitchen of course and and afterwards we'll have all the time to go and all the time to go and speak particulars uh out character sliver Harriel is pointedly ignoring your statement <laughs> like d d definitely trying to keep trying to keep a straight face as this is going on <laughs> uh game back so uh so uh uh i said several days from now so i'm guessing like three to four so three to four days from now uh three to four days from now uh she did just meet us over at uh don't meet us here at the church because all the volunteers are going to be at the location to uh, uh preemptively setting up soup kitchen and such meet us there and be prepared to work we we, we can't uh we we gotta be gotta be ready to help out those who are uh, less unfortunate and after we help save, uh, saving those uh who can't help themselves we'll be able to talk at length uh th does that sound that's, does that sound amicable to you yes uh, i will have to great i will have to great. finish the piece about the high world refugees without your insight uh um well i as i don't know exactly how it is that this uh, refugees these these, be, these um, girls that have to be kidnapped are related to the case that you are, that you were working about Merrick uh, I will have to assume that maybe he's implied in I don't know maybe he's a client from Medusa's house we will be able to talk about all those details uh, well, come, but come, I come, have come, to come, publish come. something today my editor will uh, be mad at me if I didn't so I will give him that you didn't say anything, but that there is a possible link between Merrick's and the Medusa's dance brother. Uh, I hope that that doesn't cause any trouble. Can I attempt to the? Can I attempt to tell her a lie to, in order in order to tell her that? Uh, can I attempt to lie to her and say that particular line uh, isn't actually true? You are not actually lying, uh, so <laughs> because it's true that he's not related to the Medusa's dance. Uh, okay. So we're, I'm not, we're not lying, but I don't. We haven't. We have yet to vet her, and more importantly, I, I don't. If Sharn is is supposed to be the cesspool of crime and villainy, I feel like this is not the New York. This is not the New York Times. We're dealing with. We're dealing with the Sun, and no, yes. do I not want them anywhere near this. Okay. Uh, well. Okay, yeah, did I miss anything? Be, uh, we are trying to, I, we are trying to convince uh, Violet uh, to not, not make a connection in the local tabloids between our little attack over at the warehouse in the papers, and we're trying to do it in a way that does not involve copious amounts of uh, uh, copious amounts of murder. I see you, Sliver. I see have you. We, have no. we tried asking? <laughs> Like nicely, 
Uh, are we like we're at the main place? Are we close to a ledge of some sort overlooking the city? <laughs> yes, you are close to ledges. Uh, Madame, I would like to let you know that the investigation that we're currently performing is house business, and as a result, people's lives are currently on the line. Now, once the risk is dealt with, we would be more than happy to give you a full report of everything that's happening. But right now, unfortunately, is to give more information than we have would in all okay. likelihood endanger members of Health Kenneth and Health Kenneth. I, I'd, like, I'd like to do something. I'd like to just, okay. same thing again, hold out my hand, drop my greatsword in the lap of Jonah, <laughs> who, again, buckles under it. But not as much. He can take it, because it's lighter. Mm. I put one hand on the back of Violet, and one hand mm. on the back of Harriel, and I start to, like, shove us towards one of the ledges just overlooking the city and i go we need to leave now and your investigation is a problem at the moment Let's we cannot okay. promise to talk to you next but if you i will not insist us here i will make you fly and i like gently buff her just towards the edge when you do that, oh, yeah. we're agreed. And I go pick up my great sword and like starts. When you push uh, her close to the ledge, she laughs right. and says, "Oh yeah, no, sorry. I will get back, get out of your box, continue your business. I will see you in three days in the soap kitchen. Don't leave, leave me standing. I don't particularly like that. And maybe we could later. Uh, and I am talking to you, Harriel. I don't know why you think I wasn't really clear about that." Uh, last time that I said and I could take you to some uh, some treat and some conversation uh, to the rest of you good luck and I will keep my writing about your exploits to the minimum bar, bar of information for, for now oh, if, if there isn't any hard feelings uh, jo Jordan's gonna give her, give her his like matchbook that has his like PO box in it the, the thing is this as a token of we're sorry we didn't mean to no no and I understand I understand. I understand. I am trying the house business. I know how this is. Uh, it's not the first time that someone threatens to throw me off a ledge. I have a fair full token. Uh, prepare just in case. But All right. um, I understand. I am in the way of some important mission. Go out. Save some people. Do some good. Um, and we will talk later. All right. Just, you know, no hard feelings for any no, of those. No, you know. I understand. It's my business is to annoy you and your business is to try to keep your things secret. It's a professional relationship. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, uh, it's better, you know, if we, we come to you if we want to give anything to the press. But right now... Okay, uh, in that case, I will... Uh, Harriet has my card, but I just got the, cu the coupons to the to this, cof uh, to this coffee shop and, well, I wanted to use it as, as a drive uh, of some sort or maybe as a date. But uh, you are busy and I am your way. Good luck. Thank you, but please don't get in our way. Next time, please. I... Oh, no, no, no. I will not get in your way any longer. All right. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, Lucas, I got. I have out character question. Um, yes. If I wanted to ask the Ethelgum to give me a personal dossier, how quickly could they get, uh, get me a uh, dossier on a, on a request individual? Um, depends. <laughs> if they already have one, they will give you, like, in a day. If they don't don't have one they can make a, a decent one in a week or two okay okay um uh, i know we're i know we're pressing for time and vials already left but is there any way i can fire like fire off a quick message or do i have to wait till we come back from our no no you can uh, there are uh, there are places that uh, i forgot uh, the marks you know i forgot about uh, the dragon mark that dedicate, dedicates itself to communication um, there is um, a particular CB's uh, uh, house um, has um, several uh, places in which you can pay a, a gold piece to send a, a short message to another part of the city. They have sending stones that can they use to send a small uh, message and from there a courier can make the rest of the way. If you want to send a sealed letter, it will take a little
little longer, but you can do it the, the same uh, boss. Okay. Uh, what I would like to do then is, as we as a group are moving towards um, where uh, wherever that family lives, uh, I'll ask the group just to make a quick stop so I can make a so I can fire off a message to my. Uh, I'm tell I will tell the party at whole that I just need that I forgot to send off a message home and I just need to take a quick two minutes and I go and make the verbal request. Simply need dossier on Violet from whatever yeah, whatever the name the need dossier on Violet from Inquisitor. But uh, three uh, three days from now. Any information? That's just the message. Perfect. Well, after that, you um, go to the the foundation apartment. Uh, oh, are you going to uh, do the thing about buying a sky coach, or do you keep renting sky coaches to go from one place to another? Yeah, that was the yes. thing we were discussing about. Plus a, a sky coach repairman, so he'd sell you one on probably a discount. How much was that? It was. Uh, 500 gold uh, maybe you could get it a little cheaper uh, if you have some luck we want to do this now or later uh, I'm I'm okay with either guys how long would that take Just yeah how long will that take it will take you a couple of hours uh, oh, then sure why not let's do it now yeah if everyone pitch in 100 we'll gold go there and another to make the paperwork so you're going um, to a small uh, repair where you have to take a sky coach there because if you don't, it will become a longer trip. Um, you go to the uh, the Stormhold uh, Residential. That's actually uh, that has uh, a lot of business that used to cater to ships, uh, but uh, that also uh, have some maintenance maintenance places to sky coaches. Um, you go there, and uh, you will meet a man called uh, Wilbur. Linda is a, um, an elf that dedicates itself to uh, buying uh, old uh, sky coaches, refaction them, and resell them. So when you are approach the, him, it's like, hey, Emily, good to see you, good to see you. Uh, you are here to work? Oh, 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 I see that you have some friends. Ah, boss, wonderful. Pleasure to see you. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not here for... Um contracts right now, though. If there is anything particularly urgent, you're welcome to send it over to House Denise. Uh, we're looking to buy one of the older models, actually. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. And I will make a roll. It will be, the price will be, um, let's see, 60% plus 26. Oh, I am quite, quite sorry, but in this moment, um, I have all of the boats spoken for. I can get you one. Uh, I can get you this one. Uh, he shows you uh, uh, an actually quite new model. Uh, it's slightly expensive. It will be like five, six hundred and fifty. I will give you. I could give it to you for five hundred fifty. Uh, but it's brand new. Uh, I mean, not actually brand new, but I had replaced all the important parts uh, with actually brand new parts. So I trust you, boss. Don't don't worry. Uh, she works, and um, it's actually uh, one of my best works. So... Everybody willing to throw in 150 gold or so? I'd like to um, just inspect the boat first. Okay. I, uh... I work here, man. I'm not going to second guess my boss. Me well, dying is literally a bad thing for him. Yes, actually. <laughs> so, sure, I'm but I don't know him. Well, the sliver is, is a sliver. Uh, if you have ah. Tinker tools, you can make a check with that and intelligence and try to see if you understand the, the mechanisms. Uh, okay, uh, I need to ch change the... Ah, oh, crap. Oh, uh, you actually see that it's a uh, very good work. Uh, it should be slightly faster, slightly less maneuverable. Uh, it may be like, it's a lot like buying a race car. Uh, ha, ha, uh, seeing, believing in uh, Emily's, uh, Emily's boss and seeing a sliver uh, check out the goods. Uh, unless somebody, unless the proprietor's going to stop, stop me, Harry will actually go into the driver's seat and like start getting a feel for the tools, like ch checking it how uh, check uh, checking uh, the engine, uh, feeling if the if the controls are stiff, and you know, seeing if we got actual leather or, or is it pleather for the interior. Uh, 
it's actually an, a very nice sky coach. Uh, it's slightly different from what you are uh, used to. Uh, the controls feel slightly weird. Uh, when Wilbo looks at you and sees that you are puzzling about what it weird about uh, the controls, he says, it looks, uh, it's not a typical sky coach. I, it's a prototype. I made it thinking about the eight wins race. Uh, you know, it's a race around um, Charm uh, that you can participate uh, in sky coaches or flying ship, etc. Um, but I am willing to sell it because I think that with a little more money, I could make it better. Um, so it's it has some trouble with tight turn, but it can go faster than a regular sky coach. So, oh, so that's why I'm getting that jerkiness when I when I to the left, right. Okay. So, yes. All right. All right. Harry will step out and uh, head back to, uh, head back to the group, and uh, and uh, she'll take a look at Silver, and uh, since Silver actually uh, seemed to be pr uh, inspecting Sheen itself, I step back after it's been like knocking on the hall, and you know, and I I, I am not convinced, and I simply states 550 is too much. I it's a prototype, so we take we, we take. It is flashier than anything our hands on, yeah. and where we're going, that is the detrimental. Um, oh, I, I could, I could put in a good word for you with House Denise, because we're gonna need to overhaul our um sky coaches that we have. So, other than the, could you do anything better? Uh, other than this particular model that I am not really willing to sell for less, the only other thing that I could give, give you it's a uh, work in progress. Um. Ha that I could give you today. That one, he po he points at um, Sky Coach that it's almost disassembled. Uh, I could have it done in like three to four hours, and I could give it that to you for four hundred. But uh, it will be of shoddy quality. It's we're not if in you it. want something that to um, blend in and um, being inconspicuous. Uh, people won't be looking at that machine a lot. This is uh, another thing altogether. What Sliver if we points just to came, the, What if we just hey, came back? At a Sliver few points to the fancy one. Sliver points to the fancy one and go 480 for this one. Mm, okay, I see what you are trying to do. I see what you're trying to do, but I will make you a counter offer. I could leave this um, beautiful machine that I have made. It's my best work to till today. And I could say that you could have it for 450, but you have to uh, give me two things in exchange. One, I want you to give me a full report of performance each week. Acceptable. And I um is any of you a decent pilot? I point to Harriel. And if you after the reports I am convinced that I may actually give you a couple of upgrades in exchange for you to help me win the race. Hmm. Harriel looks a little uh a little bit uh lost on it. You you want me to be, me to be your pilot? I ask if you have a decent pilot. I, I... I don't have an actual pilot. Uh, I am good at preparing things, but being the mechanic and the pilot at the same time, it's more work. Than, uh, it's, it's, it's more useful if, if we are at least two people on the ship. And uh, as you know, the eight wind races includes the possibility that some of the competitor competitors uh, might try to attack the boat. So having someone who knows how to fight and pilot it's uh, better than just having a pilot when uh, I'm gonna turn to Emily for uh, Emily and uh, just like motion for her to come over real quick I walk over <laughs> it's not that I it's not that I want to decline because making a good amount of sense but I have to I, I mean, I am wondering why he's willing to settle for me when he doesn't, he doesn't even know the level of my skill instead of, you know, actually finding a proper race driver. Can you work with him? I think I think we are making yeah. this way more complicated than it you needs are, to be. Uh, Emily, in case that you are wondering, you know that Wilbo, uh, Linda, it's uh, the kind of person that believes that everything happens for a reason. Uh, I think he, we are making this way more complicated than we need to be. 
How about we just come back in a week when you have a normal Skycar boss? Does that not solve all this issue? This isn't like an urgent purchase or anything. No, that's a second. Let's go back to the business at the hand, Will will say. I will give you this for 450 pieces of gold, but you will give me a weekly report about performance. Harry let's, acceptable. Let's yep. get, put the other part about um, a pile of for the race for later. Uh, well, actually, that's uh, the, other, the only other part. If you will not pilot for the race, I will have to ask, and the um, Sky Coaches works, I will have to ask that you lend me the uh, the Sky Coach for the race. But other than Except. that, acceptable, perfect. So, uh, here are the papers. He, pull, he gives you some papers. Here are the keys. It's a, the key is actually a, a, crisp, a small crystal. Um, to turn it on and you have your sky coach uh, hand me the 450 feet please all right liver says to emily pay the man <laughs> <sighs> all right so are we am i paying all of this or are we splitting this i thought we were splitting i thought we were splitting yes but i'm messing with you <laughs> Okay, give, give, give me give me the money, man. All right, hold on. So right. four fifty so, divided by four by four. That is one hundred twenty one hundred and twelve point five. All right, can everyone spend one hundred and twelve point five? Yes. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right, I do that. You have your own sky coach now. Uh, it's around noon. Uh, when you take your sky coach and uh, go to the to the lower ward and get get into the foundation of Pam. All right, cool. So Harry, cool. you wrote that down. Or do you want all of us to write that down? Uh, I don't think he's uh, a go. AFK. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, write yeah. it down on the inventory then. Oh, all good. So, question. So, question. What is a sky coach? Because I am a sky coach. It's kind of... it's a flying taxi. Yeah. Yes. Is it, is a boat it... that flies. I have shared um an image, but I will share it again. So is it like a like a car, or is it kind of like a? It's like a boat. A boat. boat that flies. Oh. Sorry about that. No, no. You were so very very. Um, generous, Harold. You paid the entire thing. Thank you. <laughs> I will share. Uh, this is a miniature of the Sky Coach. So one minute, and I will have share. The Sky Coach looks something like this. Oh, oh, you guys uh, Discord. Oh, so it's like a mini airship. Yes, it's like it's a mini airship. Uh, they don't work um, outside of Charm. Charm has a connection with the elemental plane of air, and that's why it's easier to build to build uh, it's a small airship um this the one that you have is a little less decorated and slightly longer and, uh, and slicker but yeah that that idea um you go down you reach the, um, the apartment the place it's not a uh, not in ruins like in ruins in, it's not super depressing and partially in ruins like high wall or the castellan district um, but you can see that it's not a, a very wealthy place um, you reach one of the towers and uh, in which the, in which you know a uh, this man is living uh, and asking around uh, they eventually will give you uh, directions until you find a, the, a man known as Kova uh, the man Kova uh, you reach his house his house is in the inside of the tower so you have to get inside of some very long and almost claustrophobic uh, hallways until you reach a small door uh, that says uh, Kovar family. You know, you notice immediately the fact that the door uh, has been uh, repaired recent recently. Uh, you are in there in this very small uh, hallway in front of the door, uh, only lit by a small door. What do you do? I push Bunny Boy in front of me into the front of the line. <laughs> Wait, why? Why do I have to be in the front? You, you're you're like, like, how tall is Slipper? 6'9". Right, you're like 6'9". I'm like 5'10". 
five nine, man. I'm not that tall. No, but like you were gonna go talk to somebody whose deceased husband came back as a warforged. Do you really want another warforged to be knocking on the door the first thing that they see? Oh, oh, oh yeah, you fuck yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Warforged yeah, are cute and nice and you know non-threatening. Oh, yeah. So I'm, okay, I'm the bearer of bad news, basically. Kinda, yeah. Wait, right, right. uh, wait, I zone the fuck out. Where am I in front of the door right now? Right? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. I proceed to uh, knock on the door. You know. You knock on the door, and after some time, uh, this man opens up a little. Says, uh, "So you are with the you are with the Inquisitor, or you come, or you are from the um, King's Black Lantern? Uh, the King's Black Lanterns. It's like the city equiv- equivalent to uh, the, the a detective agency of uh, between FBI and CIA. Well, we're uh, a bit and." You see a closed door to uh, as you start to get inside, the place gets very crowded uh, and smells very clearly to alcohol. He looks at, at you and says, Okay, so uh, you are you aren't from Canid and you want me to stop saying things about the malfunctioning war for shit because it makes you look bad. That's what you are here. To threaten in a bad move, as you may see. I, I did not so, get a word of that because I cut out. Oh, sorry. He uh, he, he uh, asked if you were from House Canid and were there to uh, threaten him to stop talking about the malfunctioning war force. Uh, no, we're here from House Denith, actually. House Denith? Yes. Okay. A funny uh, story, that. Uh, we're interested in, uh, we believe your story, actually. He looks slightly surprised at that. It's related to an ongoing criminal custody, if that makes sense. Not it makes a lot of sense lately, but... We'd just like to some... ask you a few questions. You know. Okay, yeah. I, I will answer the best that I can. Alright. Uh, can you tell us exactly what's what's been happening or what you've been spreading, as it were, in relation well, to this mysterious war? Uh, a couple of days... A couple of days? No, it's almost a week now. <laughs> uh, like, a week ago, uh, my, my... I was coming home from work and I find I found the that the door was broken and a very and I rushed rushed to the door and I saw a, a very strange thing. It was like a war force but it also has had hair and some flesh. It was a very very strange thing and it was um, playing with my daughter. It was playing uh, they were playing with uh, my with, with dice. Uh, it's a small gambling game that we used to play as a family. We gambled host chores, but it, I saw my daughter and I got scared and I tried to attack the team, but it pushed me to the wall. Uh, actually, uh, I, I almost broke my hip when, when he did when it did that. Uh, but later, it apologized to me uh, and it did it with my wife's voice, and that's weird. Not only because it was coming out of a war force, but because my wife had died a month ago in a factory accident. Emily is just completely white as she happens. So, describe, so it had flesh on it, you said, right? Or am I getting that wrong? Yes, yes, it has, it has part that were metal and part that were flesh. Emily will... So was it like, so was it like a... Like, uh, Warforge size, like really tall, or just like kind of like your wife, like size, like I don't know, like five foot six or something like that. It was slightly taller than my wife, but n- not as big as your companion over there. Emily will produce a notepad to Quill and say, Could you draw roughly what this creature looked like? Yes, I could. Uh, one moment. And Emily's gonna, was... <laughs> you know, exactly what Emily's gonna do with that drawing. She looked, she is like visibly sweating. Um, sure. I will show you. You here. It looked something like this. No, hide it. I will be able to show it. Uh, it looked something like this. That's wow. Okay. Emily's that's gonna, ooh, yeah, that. Emily's gonna 
look at that and just like, is, is this what she thinks it is? Does this look like what she thinks it is? Because I think it is. Yes. God damn it. Uh, Emily is going facepalm and say oh, another one. It's different uh, from you. Uh, it's like in your case, when you are doing your surgery, you try your best to look human. Uh, in this case, it's clear that not a priority. But in terms of functionality, is it basically the same technology? Similar. Oh, God damn it. And your wife, oh. I'm sorry to ask, but do you know where she was when she died? Was she taken to a funerary home? Was she buried? No. Um, we both work uh, in the Ash Black uh, district, in, in factories, uh, and there was an accident uh, on her shift, and most of the factory actually collapsed, and uh, they weren't able to recover any of the bodies. And where was How this? How many bodies? Uh, sorry, uh, what? Uh, we both have valid questions, but Har uh, Emma spoke first, so you ask your question. Where was this, and how many people died? Mm, uh, it's below this, sa this same district. Uh, you have to go underground, and then take a subterranean uh, lighting train that puts you pr pretty much below the, um, the store's uh, warehouse. Uh, and I don't know, maybe they died like 100 and something people. Oh my god. Do you know what god. caused this? Was this just an industrial accident? Or... Uh, I don't know. Uh, they didn't give me a lot of information. They gave me... A hundred people died and there was no follow-up? Me... That sounds suspicious. Uh, yes, they, there was some follow-up, but I it was between the insurance company and the and host can eat about the, how much they should recover from the investment and that sort of things. I in a moment, the only thing that I got was 50 gold to compensate for emotional damage. That's horrible. Yes. Who? What was this factory? Who owned this? Is this owned by House Canadian? I think so. Uh, we made um, we mostly made uh, pieces um, um, gears. Uh, we have a part that made the wheels from for the lighting train and the wheel. No, not the wheels. They don't use wheels. Um, pieces, uh, moving pieces, uh, gears, um, but definitely health and related things. Yes, uh, it was actually. Uh, it, we made uh, the pieces that were used later for more complex machinery. All right. Well, uh, good news, sir. We know what happened. We uh, we know who was responsible for this, but bad news. We're still trying to nail it on him. Well, that's that's fuck up. But it's better than the, what I have till today. So I assure you. We'll receive some justice for what has happened. And who did it? I kind of we're not. I kind of turned to Harriel. Do I tell him? Uh, let's just say we're not living intelligence yet. But don't worry. Uh... Powerful and corrupt noble. And okay. someone whose head will be rolling a floor shortly, I assure you. Make a procession check because he really wants to have someone to blame, like right now, and possibly try to burn his house or something like that. But 16. Yeah, with a 16, you managed to convince him that he will fall eventually. Okay, so I will keep quiet for now. I understand that if I don't, maybe he ran away or something like that, and I don't want him to escape. I I assure so you, will you will receive you. justice. Just please let Perfect. us know if you learn anything else. I believe we're going to be investigating this death. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, it's the first time that someone, the only people that were interested in all of this were the newspapers and I think that's only because it was a uh, piece, piece of tabloid, tabloid piece. Uh, yeah. Harry will step forward. Uh, she has been quiet because this has been Emily's name. Okay. Uh, she's going to step forward and she's going to act quietly when you were first told about your wife's ha about the incident, yes. the ac were you told what was the nature of that of the accident at the factory? An explosion of some sort. Uh, you see, uh, in the cogs we work with uh, magma fountains that power up the machinery and are used to smell the metal. And apparently there was uh, someone uh, poured uh, uh, dropped something in the magma and that causes an caused an explosion uh, it was a factory accident sometimes these things happen uh, but this is not the I first will... time this has happened the, it's the first time that so many people died uh, from time to time you have something malfunction and, and a small explosion or 
noxious fumes and a couple of men die or are injured. In this case, apparently the entire uh, sector collapsed where, and it has remained uh, out of boundaries for, for people after that. Apparently it's still dangerous to go there. Harry will nod at this and, the sec- and this question's been on her mind ever since she walked in because you described earlier that the place was king of alcohol and there's like bottles around and such. Yes. Sir, where is your daughter? Oh yes, I uh, the thing took her. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Wait, wait. It, was this when she first arrived, or was this recently? My, I don't know. It's my wife. I, you have more information than me. Yeah. But when, when I, did when she I, take her? When I uh, found them together, I t- thought that he was some sort of malfunctioning war forfeit, and I attacked him. It, right. Uh, it hit me, and uh, I couldn't walk, and it took my... Uh, it apologized to me, but I screamed for help, and it took took my daughter in its arms and ran away. I have been trying to look into the sewers, but, uh, well, it took me a couple of days to be able to walk, and not a lot of people are willing to help me in here. And you told all of this to the city city guard when it first happened? Yes, but uh, they told me that they sent a patrol in the area, but they didn't find anything. Um, well, you know how the god is. Harriel is going quietly, just nod at the gentleman, and step outside. Uh, Sliver, are you outside or inside? I am trying very hard not to be intimidating inside. Cool. Uh, just want to step outside real quickly, and two seconds later, you're going to hear, uh, you'll hear a loud bang as Harriel slams her fist on one of the walls, and then she'll come Sliver, back inside. I kind of don't want to miss her going darkness, so I kind of shiver out, shimmer, shimmy out of the door and try to look. It's like, what's going on? Harold does not say anything. He just steps back inside, and uh, ju- and uh, she'll go up to she'll go up to uh, wow, she'll go up to the jail now. To go Kobar, she's going to kneel down eye level. Right now is not the time drowning yourself in alcohol. We are doing our best to crack down this warforge who has left child. What we need you to be doing right now be as sober and as clear minded as possible, not only to help us but to help child. Not slowly, and you can see that he's feeling ashamed. But he tells you, okay, but I have been trying to track, uh, track them down, and I have failed to this day. Uh, I could tell you, I could lead you and walk with you if you want. Uh, Please do. So, to the last place that someone see them, but they went into the ruins below the city, and that's a difficult place to explore. We shall follow. Thank you. No, thank you. I assure you, this is a lot bigger. Well, uh, so, uh, that's Let's go. You know, he stands up. You notice that he is drunk, but decided. Uh, let's go. I will guide you. Are you Can sure he seemed kind of tipsy? Can Emily Look. bullshit up like a detoxifier or whatever so he's at least sober? Is there like a... Or just put him, drop, put him like cold water? That, that's what I was yes, thinking. Yes, actually, he... Uh, no, he will go to the kitchen in where uh, there's actually running water in Sharn. So he will open... Uh, he will wash his car his mm. face and says, okay, uh, I am not in the best possible shape, but I know that I can get you to where you want to go. So let's go. Um, I know he just washed his face to try and wake himself up, but I'm looking at, I'm just looking at what I have here. Can I lay on hands and try and realize yes, uh, totally. the system? Uh, it's, it works like a meal potion, uh, poison, so yes. Cool. Uh, I'll use lay on hands. Uh, do you actually want me to roll the stuff out? or? No, 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 no. You, you use one of your charges and he is sober. All right. I go touch him and just you see the yes you see the healing energy coming from my hand and after some time I'll I'll, I'll put back in and I, and I say that should help you uh, clear your head. He looks at you and say thank you. Okay, okay. So uh, now I am sober for the first time in many days. So let's go. All right, All let's right. go. So we're going to the sewer right now, or like the ruins, basically. No, it's actually below the sewers. The cogs. No, it's actually huh. below the cogs. Oh. 
Uh, no, sorry. It, uh, between the Cox and the city, there are some ruins uh, that are mixed with the sewers in some places. Uh, that ruins of a goblin city that used to stand in this place uh, a long time ago. So, he will start to guide you through the sewers uh, until he eventually reaches um, a small fountain. Uh, no, fountain, no. It's a, some sort of well. I, I will show you this bridge here and uh, here it says okay this was the last place that I could track her are we supposed to be able to see these tokens yes okay. you see this you see a uh, two women one is older and the other is younger uh, they are sitting in a corner they are dressed in very old clothes uh, and are sharing a small uh, bowl of soup you will be uh, here oh oh we drag so do, onto the map. Okay. so do they look like they're like homeless or something or yes they look homeless with two sabels. Uh, mm -hmm. they look homeless and they look at you uh, and the younger one says do you have a spare coin if you have the information Jonah. we're looking for oh you are uh, yes we have seen some things um, but uh, if you want information I will have to ask you for something more than some comments we will have to ask you for some food oh dear uh, does anyone uh, have any food on or ha ha harold up to them and reach into her pack and pull out uh pull out one to her only mess uh, pull out an entire day's an entire day's worth of ration i mean just rations you he, got an accomplished he, he, chef in the party he looks at you and say hey, i could give oh this looks nice but if i give you food uh, if i food i'm sorry i'm so hungry that i am confused sometimes if i give you the information that you need. Do you promise that you will give me something with more meat, maybe? Or is that too much to ask? Sliva, you notice the fact that Fireball is quite nervous. It's actually starting to uh, hiss at the woman. I step up next to Harriel, right here. Okay. I'd like to do an insight check on these guys. Okay. Just what what what, what I can learn about them. Where is that perception? Um, perception, if you are looking at them as in clues about the clothes or about the physique or, and it's inside if you are trying to guess their motives or uh, state of mind. You look at them and if you're looking at them you notice one small thing that usually homeless people smell bad because they don't have a lot of opportunities to wash themselves but they don't smell at anything. I mean, they said they wanted food, if that's going to help us. So Emily is just going to kind of kneel down. She's going to pull out this big metal thing, which is basically like a small broiler. And she's probably just going to start cooking a steak. When okay. I have when do that, pretty sure Emily? I have expertise in cooking tools. Uh, do a, do, do a uh, cooking tools uh, check. Alrighty. Uh, hmm. What attribute? Uh, I think it will be wisdom. Okay. So, uh... 13 on cooking steak. You start to cook, and the woman says, Hey, this is all good. Uh, I will give you the information if you promise to give me something with more meat later. Later. It could be any other day. I was like, more meat and steak. That's not... Ah, uh, fine. And I start, like, putting some pastry on the outside to make it a bit more beef welling style. <laughs> she looks at you and says, Okay. Uh... Is this... Man, so do they look any... Are they wearing any, like, specific rings or anything? Or no? Uh... Like, as... Sorry, I didn't cut. What were you saying? Oh, like, are they, like, wearing any rings or anything that look like they're part of houses or anything? Or no? No, no, no. They are not wearing any rings. Uh, they look at you, they look at the meat and say, okay, we will give you this time the information that you need. What are you looking for? Can I just quickly inside check them too? Because yes, you don't I am yeah. getting very suspicious. Yeah, can I inside them too? Oh, I can. Yeah, it's weird to try to have an insight on them because there is something unnatural about how they behave. We you know, believe the them to be homeless. They, they behave, uh, they ask about the food, but even now that they have food in front of them, none uh, of them are eating. And we suspected that they dying we suspected, of hunger. We suspected that they were homeless, right? Yes. Are they dirty or like yes, disheveled in any way? They are quite dirty and disheveled. Oh, are they not eating the food I made for them? No, they are not eating they uh, they said told you well uh, what information do, did you need I, okay 
okay, uh, we let them know about the Warforged tracking and ask if they've seen her. Oh, yes, yes, the Wretched Pole thing. Uh, it went that way. They point at this uh, entrance in here. It went that way. It was carrying a small child. Uh, which which way? I, I didn't see the thing. Uh, this way. They went that way, beyond the statue. Then let's head that oh. way. Yes, and I think that that she's staying quite close. Uh, ten minutes walking down that path, and you should find her. Are they kind of like, have ulterior models the way they're saying it? Or they're being 100% yeah. genuine? No, you have the idea that they are not being totally honest. They, can, I roll, can I roll insight on yes, this? Or yes, no? yes, yes, you can. Yeah. Maybe an insight check. Uh, better. There is something weird about this, but you are not really sure what. Mm. I'm going to I'm going to motion to the party, and I'm even going to motion to Emily to stop cooking. Okay. Thank you so much for your, for your information. I hope you enjoy this valuable feast here, and we'll be on our way. Oh, we will enjoy your feast. Don't worry about. It. Uh, good luck. Uh, is uh, Pink? Is this door open over here? Uh, yes, you can go uh, in that direction. Cool. I'm go I Harry will motion to everybody to go to this door here instead of towards the, instead of towards the statue. I I'm pointedly ignoring the information they've just given us cuz why? I didn't I didn't do the inside check, but you just made a whole bunch of food in front of them and they're not touching it. If the look at where we're at. This is the sewers and they they're they're begging us food. A drowning man a drowning man doesn't turn their nose up at hot water. Yet th is there a problem with yes. mistake, ladies? Fireball disagrees. I do not like the vibe of the situation. They set something off going on here. I asked them if there's a problem with food. Oh, no, no, no. It's quite good. And we will enjoy it. Uh, we see you uh, shortly. Well, then here you go, and we'll be on our way. <sighs> Thank you very much. They say, but they don't to touch the food. Okay, let's move on, then. I, okay. I pack up my stuff. Uh, um, to where? Do you, uh, you go to this door over here, or this one? Well, I was suggesting this one over here. Uh, follow Harriel. Yeah, I'll follow as her. We're, as we're walking, I'm going to whis whisper in Sliver's ear. It's not that I. It's not that I don't think they're on the up and up. If they're not, if they're not willing to tell us proper information, then let's not waste time. Oh, like we know it doesn't help. Uh, one of them says, "But we are giving you proper information. Let's ignore them and move on." Hold up. If Harriel whispered that to me and they heard it, they yeah. aren't just regular little people. Yeah, I was saying, I was whispering that directly to Sliver. I wasn't saying that out loud. Yes, but they seem to caught up with that. Yeah. One of them looks at the other and says, Okay, uh, we were hoping for some entertainment first, but I call dibs on the cat. Liver immediately grabs a hand axe and throws it at this one. Oh, oh, oh shit, we're they on went, Why? Then, why did they go after why did they go after Fireball? You you, you throw the, the, um, the axe and it passes uh, through the air as the image of the woman disappears. Oh god. Uh oh. And fair, I actually rolled if I were to go to throw the axe before she went for fireball, so... Uh, Are we at roll initiative well, now? Initiative. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Alright. All right. Also, I want to say, while I was looking for that picture of Beef Wellington, I I found this, but I thought it was kind of inappropriate to bank for them. <laughs> God, no, don't do that. Rip. Oh. It, it makes sense. You have just attacked something and it disappears. It has confused you. So I think this is the first time I've rolled an, an initiative that was actually over 10. I don't understand why you have like a negative initiative, man. I still don't get it. <laughs> well, Ariel, you go first. You see the that the, the other woman has disappeared and this one is laughing. <laughs> All of you are visibly seeing Harriel just like breathe in and breathe out. And as a free action, she's, she's telling this individual, look, if this was any other time, 
we would be willing to play this game with. But personally, I don't. We do not have time for this bullshit right now. Yeah, enough of these kid games. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, so you say that? Mm -hmm. uh, she looks at you and say, okay, so we will skip the the game and we will go straight to the feeding. To the okay. what now? I, I don't like this. We're going to go bonker in the head then. All right. Okay, so after saying after saying that, um, I'm going... Uh, but you, you know what? I'll, I'm going to put... Since she's going to do like this, I'll play it safe. And I'm going to cast Bless on everybody but me. Perfect. Cool. So that's a D4, right? Yeah. The die. There you go. So everybody's got an extra D4 when it comes to attack rolls or saving throws. Okay. And then from there, um, as for my movement, uh, I'm going to I'm going to move over here. That way I can that way I can effectively use my protection ability uh, in case in case anything happens. Perfect, Emily. All right. So what does this bitch look like? The woman in here is laughing. The other one has been attacked with an axe and disappeared. Um, you uh, you could try to make a perception check to see if you see anything else or you can try to act with the information that you have i'm gonna have zabel make a perception check because hers is better than mine oh perfect 17 17 she sees she points out that there is something in the water over here Ooh, uh, can i see what is in the water uh you can uh... you can have to roll a perception you have advantage because you know exactly where to look okay i will attempt to do that uh boop, boop. Not 20. Hey. Perfect. You see, Ooh. you don't spend an action to see it. You see that below the water, there is a woman, this former and um, old. Oh, shit. What the hell is that? Uh, I don't know if you have knowledge nature. Uh, do I have nature? Uh, oh, God, no. You can roll intelligence anyway. All right. Because it's not a secret. It's something that some people... That's a 16 on untrained. You recognize a sea hack. Oh, I know what hags are. Okay. But, uh, as a bonus action, I'm going to tell Zabel. Hey, can Zabel swim? <laughs> or does she sink? I think that she will sink, but this water is not very deep, so... All right, I yell at Zabel. I, as a bonus action, I command she Zabel to charge to the hag. Okay, perfect. And so that is just a regular attack? Yes. All right, uh... Kerzap, seven. And you fail. All right, and then for my turn, I'm going to shoot a fireball at this one. Woman, uh, Perfect. and go pew, 20. And she, yes. Of course. Illusion, there's hags in the water. Well, as you say that, actually, this illusion disappears too. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> And the hack crawls out of the water, and you'll have to make a DC 11 saving throw because she is hideous. Uh, can Zabel take an attack of opportunity for that? Uh, actually, yes. Zap. Oh, she managed to zap hey. her. Right, and wisdom say. Okay, wisdom say. Uh, wisdom is ass. But hey, 17. Really, it's like, oh, I see worse things. I got, I got 20. It's like, like, maybe if I look her in the right light, she might be attractive. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Freaking bunny boy. I have seen worse in my day. <laughs> Way worse. <laughs> Okay, you are all clear. Uh, sleeper. Yeah, um, I have inspiration. Can I use that as an yes. additional role? Wait, yes, wait, wait, and wait, you wait. are blessed uh, too. Yeah, wait, but wait. blessed would only be 10. I need to fix uh, 11. <clears throat> yeah, perfect. So, another wisdom. Hey. Oh, great. <laughs> cool. So, you managed to avoid uh, being um, terrified by the hack, and the hack advances toward Emily oh. and hits her with her claw. Ow, Fine. Yes, the claws just slash your clothes, but they don't manage to cause any serious damage. I, I want to say something. I'm not in the turn order for some reason. Oh, Shona, sorry. Um, I will. Yeah, get I was trying to. I noticed that too because you went straight to Sliver. And I'm like, wait, he, Jonah's at seven. All right, my bad. Yeah, you're good. Give your turn, and you have rolled 11? seven. Oh, seven. Rolls. Yeah, seven. You are between the both. Uh, hack. What? Wait, I'm I'm between. Oh, I see. 
in initiative. No, no. Oh, I see, I see. I was about to say. All right. Uh, actually, this hack is still on C. All right. Uh, okay. So it's my turn now, right? Yes. All right. I'm gonna use my psionic blades, and uh, if I if it hits, I can use my uh, sneak attack, right? Yes. Okay. One second. Does a uh, fifteen hit? Uh, fifteen hits her. Okay. Let me just uh, one second. Let me just add my six points of damage. And let me just roll. Yeah, sneak attack. All right. Give me a second. Yeah. Okay, sneak attack is uh, right there. Nine. And can I use my second blade? Uh, uh, yes. You okay. Can. Well, I can imagine I'm just Ooh. ducking and he's just stabbing over me. I mean, I can just throw them. Yes. No, no, but she, she's there because she's in front of you, but she's, like, relatively small, so... You yeah, can how, t how tall are rabbit folk? Like, normal size. Alright, because I'm, like, five foot one. And yeah. Joe's, like, very short. Yeah, so you, oh. have, uh, you have enough, enough space to throw uh, knives over her without problem. And you hit... No, you fail to hit. Yeah. Perfect. So, from below the water, the green hag appears and will cast lightning bolt. Well, this is... Thing. Wait, she's underwater though. That's true. She will get out of the water. <laughs> and I was about to say, she's gonna that. shock herself. Yes, so you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Unless someone has a ball. No, no, you dodge it without any problem. Very agile rabbit person. Very agile um, rabbit person. And, um, Hariel. Uh, right. That, I was just double checking something. Uh, check, check. Uh, Sl Sliver, you can't use Bless again? Well, I haven't used Bless, but will it, like, I don't know what the, um... Oh, the DC is. Uh, it has to be more than 10, so... Yeah, it's 12, so you... Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. However, I will say what? that bef right before, as I threw the axe, I told Fireball to run and hide. He is not in my hood anymore. Perfect. Uh... <laughs> Ah, shit, I forgot to do my infusions this morning. Fuck, so I don't have that. So, we will take this I need to remember to do that every morning. Oh, that I the bell. Ow. Ow. Jesus! 32 damage. Holy fuck. How much health do you have? Um, um below uh, half no. now. No, no, you receive no damage, and Hariel, you receive half damage, so 16. Ow! Yes, you Jesus. are all, like, in a perfect line, and well. Yeah, that's kind of a bar full right there. Like, goddamn! Um, Sliver, your turn. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of annoyed. So the first thing I'm going to do is rage. Perfect. So then I'm going to move to here, and I'm going to... Um, great weapon master. Okay, you will have advantage because the sea hack was attacking Emily. And I'm gonna hit Perfect. with my uh, great sword. You hit. <laughs> oh, and sorry, that's right. Uh, advantage. Uh, yes, because that 17 will not have hit, but that 20 did. So you hit her for 13, 15 slashing damage plus 10. Uh, 25 damage. 25 damage. Yep. And she looks. Almost dead. You cut off one of her arms because why not? Hurry up. Okay. Uh, she should not have moved up in front of me like that. Cause I'm going to do, I'm going to do exact same thing and bonk her on the head. Perfect. Okay. Cool. That's a bonus action. You hit her. All right. And with that connecting, I'm going to spend the bonus action to cast Searing Smite. That's a good idea. Burn off that spell slot, and that's going to be an additional. Um, it's going to be additional one fire damage, and they're going to be on fire this works first eight slashing damage and then five fire damage as the fire <laughs> And the hack is on fire. Ta -da. Uh, that's your turn. We. Um, uh, I'm just going to adjust my movement to right here. Perfect. And yeah, that will do it. Good, Emily. Okay, so Zabel will climb out of the water and zap the hag as a bonus action. Perfect. So she does she need to make an action to climb over the wall or? No, it's uh, no. See, yeah, I am sorry. Yes, she will need to make an athletic. Check. Can I make it an acrobatics check instead? Uh, yes, I usually... No, sorry, because you're underwater. You okay. don't have a lot of place to... You need the strength to do All this. Right, 13. Yes, you managed to climb out of the water. 
Alright, and then she's gonna kerzap for 15 to hit. Perfect. You... No, you're sorry. You failed to hit. 15 fits to hit. Dang. Okay. Yeah, um... the green bird is quite stronger than the sea hack. Alright, well, I forgot to infuse today, so that means I don't have melee weapons. So, um... Um... Don't have a whole lot I can do in melee, so I guess I'm going to take a dodge action and intentionally provoke to get the hell out of melee. Perfect. Uh, you can do the use the disengage action. Uh, oh yeah, the, oh, disengage. Sorry, yeah, I'll, I would like to do that. Perfect. You do that, and you are there. Yep. Cool. The C hack it will actually make the disengage action and move one, jump in the water, two, three, four, five, six, and swims away. Um, Shona. Is she still hittable in the water, or no? Yes, she's. All right. So okay, I'm gonna try to do a snipe attack with my Sakonic blades. Perfect. Oh. You have to actually put yourself over here because in this place the wall will. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. So I can't move my token actually. Yeah. I wait a minute. Oh, the token it's not representing you for some reason. I will solve that now. There. Right. There we go. Okay. I'm. Okay, I'm gonna assume that didn't doesn't hit right. Eleven. An eleven. Does Remember hit. the bless. Oh yes, remember the bless because with a fourteen you hit her. Okay, I see, I see. One d four, you need a three to to hit her. Alright, okay. and do I apply my sneak attack or is that like? No, because uh, she's running away, but she knows where you are and you don't have any ally. Uh, okay. But before rolling damage, uh, roll the bless die. It's a d four to see if you hit her or not. Right, d four. Ah no. No. Right. You the first one, and uh, you have the bonus action to try to throw the other one. Alright, I'm assuming that hits too? But that hits, or no? That hits, and you manage to do three points of damage, because the left hand, you don't use the dexterity modifier. Right. Oh, yeah. And uh, you manage to hurt her very little, but, well, it's something. Yeah, it's good uh, damage. The green hack here, uh, it will... I hope she doesn't have another lightning bolt in there, because that would probably kill us. Yes, she has, but she doesn't have, in this case, if, if she jumps in the water, she can use the light bolt, and she has to run all the way over here to do the other lightning bolt, so she could hit only one target, so she will have choose. So she will cast Dashmal Killer on Zabel. Oh, Jesus, what? She need to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, Zabel wisdom save. No, Zabel, no. Uh, sorry, because she's an automata. Uh, oh. Oh, I need to make a wisdom Oh, this, if I survive this, oh, you managed to <laughs> avoid, you shake your head and you manage to uh, avoid the phantom killer. You are quite angry, I imagine, but alive. Uh, wait, so do I take half damage or no damage? N no damage. Oh, thank God. Yes. And yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I recognize um, that spell. Oh, shit. Are you going to warp out? That's so, a spell to kill Tarek, Fred. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Um, she suffers 1d6 of damage, so call that for me, please. Sorry? Uh, she suffers 1d6 for fire damage. Do, 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 do. Four fire damage. But, uh, Sliver. I'm gonna move up next to the hag, and uh -huh. new turn, same as the old turn. Uh, great weapon master, great sword, hit. But, Bonk. Oh, uh, you, you, what are you doing? Reckless attack or not? No, no reckless attack, oh, but okay. I'm flanking. Uh, it's a bell. Yes, yes, that's true. I will consider that she was looking that way, so yeah. Roll damage. Another 25. Hey. You hit her like a truck, but she's unnaturally tough. Hell As a free action, uh, as, yeah, everybody, every, as a free action, uh, everybody can see that for first time ever, Hariel, this is different from back at the, um, uh, back at the warhouse. Hariel has a look of absolute fucking rage on her face. Uh, Barbarial. I, so, well, let me just make sure I can use that. There's oh, oh. Oh, she she can warp out. Okay. Um, I, I'm still within five feet, so I'm going to go and uh, attack with my longsword. Sorry. Uh, that's basic it because I already use Searing Smite, and that's already in effect, and all my other stuff only procs an act. But she's pissed that's... as fuck. She's she's pissed as fuck. Like it it it's point. You notice that the green hack seems to be enjoying your raid, Emily. Uh, I'm assuming fire spell don't work underwater, right? She's not underwater. Oh, to no. the sea hack. The other one. Yeah, 
against the sea hack. Yeah, sorry. Fire spells. I will actually allow the, you to attack, but you will have disadvantage. Oh boy. All right. Well, in that case, I'm going to pull out my crossbow for the first time in the entire campaign. And I'm going to shoot at the underwater one. Perfect. Nine. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, nine. Uh, no, even with a four in the blessing. And then nine to hit the other one. I am just not on point today. No. The sea hag will swim away. Jonah. Okay. Well, uh, so I'm assuming this sea hag sees me, right? He knows where I am, right? Yes. Ooh. But uh, you have allies around her, so you have sneak attack. Okay, good. All right, I'm going to rinse and repeat what I've been doing for the past. Perfect. So All right, so, and let me, let me roll for blast, see if it... No, no, sorry. That even with the best blessing, a nine fail. Okay, let me get my second one. Uh, roll the blessing because that might hit. She, she she's a bit tougher than it looks. Yes, she is. You hit her. All right, so and first sneak attack damage. Yes. So you do twelve points of sneak attack damage and four points, sixteen points of damage. You hit her. She is at a quarter of her, his of her life. So what she will do is do the disengage action and swim away. One, two, three, five, six, and another move action. God damn it! Oh. Yeah. The good thing is that uh, because she wanted to leave, she didn't cast lightning uh, against um, Sliver and Emily. So Emily punches the ground frustration. You can hear laughing from the tunnels uh, but you, they sound slightly fake. Like They laugh because they know that that will piss you off, but they are not happy. So they're afraid of us? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jones go light a cigarette and say, that's the worst, that was the worst woman I ever seen in my life. That was uh, not... Emily... <sighs> next to you says, well, and you see, that's the reason that I didn't manage to venture a lot into these ruins. They are filled with these sort of things. I really hope that my girl is okay. Now, uh, Ariel's going to move, is Ariel's breathing hard. Um, she's going to move away from the group a bit, and you can all hear her breathing, like, trying to calm herself down. Uh, I also want to ask, before we continue to play, uh, did the hags knock over the bridge while we were fighting? No, the bridge was never there. Oh, okay. The bridge was an illusion. I think none of us actually walked on the bridge. Emily yeah, is going to reach down. She's going to flip a switch on her neck, and she's going to unleash a tirade of expletives in uh, Gnomish towards the towards the sound of the hags. A, a language which you wouldn't expect to have a lot of expletives, but like it has a surprisingly colorful vocabulary. <laughs> wow. And also, because I oh. forgot to do my friggin' infusions today, I'm going to give myself... I'm going to infuse my mace... And I'm also going to walk over to uh, Hariel. Right, you're the Hariel was the one you casted last, right? Yes. Cool. I will walk over to your armor and I will give it a jolt. You now have mind sharpener. Jolene's gonna offer Hariel a cigarette. You okay there? You seem kind of Who, me? on edge. No, no, Hariel. Oh. Ooh, that that is it's handy. Pretty handy. Uh, so Jonah, when when you walk over, um, you see uh, uh Harriel squatting, and she she's visibly she's visibly uh shaking for a moment. Uh, she I'm not going to notice you, but uh, since you're right next to me, uh, you'll be able to see this. Uh, she when you when you get close, she is uh clutching what seems to be a necklace of dog tags, like military dog tag. There's in there's uh there's about uh, there's more than one, as far as you can see. But she's cl clenching them, and her and she's like holding on to them for dear life, as she's breathing really heavily in and out, in and out. Uh, Jonah's gonna offer her a uh, cigarette if she wants one. Uh, for this specific moment, uh, even if you put the cigarette in front of her, right in front of her face, uh, 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 Harriel's not going to react. It, it, she's focusing. She seems to be out of focus. She's not really paying attention to her surroundings. So I'm taking, and Jonah's gonna say, I'm taking that your part of the armor, I guess. You know, does she respond to that, or she's still in there having a moment? She's still, ha she's still having a moment. Like you, all, you all heard that, heard that out of character, but in character, Hyrule has not mentioned what's got her pissed off at this point. But she's she's tilted. She's tilted. That's why she, that's why she stepped off the side for a second. So uh, give it about, like, say, like two, three minutes afterwards, she'll come into focus and she'll realize that you, you. You've got a cigarette like right in front of her. You want, want one? You seem on edge. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, no, I, I just needed to 
it's just it's needed a moment. Just let's no. And she'll finally get up and her shoulders her shoulders are square now. She's not shuddering anymore. She for the most part calm down, but there is the tiniest tremble uh uh in her hand. You notice a uh, skip uh, that starts to you notice fireball that approaches you and head boot head bats you in the leg, Ariel. Repeat me. Ariel, if you want someone to blame for all of this mess, blame me. All of this, everything that's happened today is directly my fault. I give you full permission to punch me in the face. If I hadn't did what I did with Merrick's, none of this would have ever happened. Ariel, Ariel first le uh, leans down and just gently, like, pets uh, fireball, uh, fireball on the head. Uh, positions are accurate. Uh, Jonah, you'll see that she's, uh, that she's got a small, uh, she's got, like, a sad smile on her face. In response to you, Emily, uh, I'm not going to punch you for something that has that wasn't under your... Merrix is using my data to turn that woman into a monster and is kidnapping children. I may not have been the one who pulled the trigger, but I definitely designed the gun. Believe you me, I have, been, I have punched myself plenty in the last few days. I am directly responsible for all of this. Harriel gives the gives a, a sad sound chuckle, and her response is, despite what Sliver would say, punching you right now, punching anything right now, isn't really going to solve. You shouldn't, you shouldn't treat yourself. Well, then praise to the flame. We have a job to do. Let's try and find that woman. Liver? Oh, post something I'm in not Discord. that much of an asshole. <laughs> I mean, there's I, only four of the, us. The, yeah, I, the only the, the only like thing I could think of when Emily said you could punch me in the face was Sliver running up and going, choose me as your champion. <laughs> that was the only thing I could think of. So, okay, I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> I, uh, I am addressing you in character. Yeah, I, I know. Like, I'm just, I'm still, I'm not raging, but I'm pissed. Uh, I couldn't find my axe. So I'm pissed. Uh, Liver? Yes. When we encounter those hags again, if you, yes. don't, if you don't kill first, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll work. If you don't get to them before I do, I'm not going to get anything. Then let's I'll get a hold move on, shall you, we? Smack. Harold, Harold doesn't res Harold doesn't respond back, but you get the you get the weird inkling that he's silently agreeing to what uh to what you just said. I reach down and pick up fireball, like kind of sweeping fireball across your like the back of your head, so he, he gets to play with your hair before he goes up in the hood. <laughs> Walk over to the bunny man, give him a tap on the shoulder. You happy you chose to sign up with the correct group? You have in doubts. I admit we're not the uh, classic house dinner at Mercenaries. So usually I work alone when it comes to like this kind of stuff, but you know, it's good to work with a bunch of people. Last time I got my ass fucking kicked by some drunken father. I had you mind. I had to kill him once. I had to break a bone or two for him because, oh, well, I, 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 they fucking stole the kids at midnight and guess you had to call the fucking bunny detective. I thought it was a murder, but again, again, it was just some divorce case. So. Really, it's a good breath of fresh air, if you don't mind. And do you see Jonah kind of take another cigarette and then, like, light it and opposite it? Want one? You prefer the kidnapping and body horror over the murder case, over the divorce cases? And there's a point where I, there's, you know, a little variety in me, you know what I mean? <sighs> I just, let's, let's keep moving. Is anyone injured? Yeah. Alright, uh, are we taking um, a short rest, or would you like a healing potion? Well, we do have a healing potion in the group. Um, I don't, I don't remember if I have any. So I, I I don't think we want to waste time right now. No, I don't have any. So do I take the groups or yeah, go ahead. what's going on? If we have one in yeah. the group, give that yeah. a drink and let's I'll take, going. Yeah, I'll take it and just throw it in the mouth and just start chomping down on the glass. <laughs> I mean, all right, that works too. <laughs> hey, you know, you don't let anything go to waste, you know? <laughs> I'll, I, 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 not... I don't really have to care about, you know, swallowing glass being bad for me. No. I mean, Wait, where does it go? Would you prefer to have an esophagus? Because that's something I can design for you. And, like, a proper uh, stomach so you can taste food? I can taste food. That is no problem. I just can't eat uh, to get nourishment. But as you say that, and this is in character, I kind of level my sword at you a little bit. You stay where you are. I don't trust your um, magic, let's say. I wouldn't experiment on you without <laughs> your consent. That's exactly why I want to kill Marex right now. And yet you want to give me weird flesh thingies. I offered it. If you don't want flesh, I won't give it to you. Honestly, all of this, and she kind of points to her own face, this is just aesthetics. Makes life easier. By the way, uh, healing potion, what do I do? <laughs> 
Uh, I think it's but two D four plus two. Yes, two D four plus two. Uh, okay. Seven. seven points of seven. But, uh, I like to think well, it's like kind of like a gas station, and he has like a little fuel tank. He has to pour the potion into. <laughs> No, I just throw it in my mouth, chomp a couple of times, and it's like goes down into the furnace in my torso, basically. Uh, your, stom- your stomach, basically. Uh, well, yeah. We, well, most people, most healing potions in Sean are spiked with a type of ethanol. It's completely harmless to humans, but it's incredibly he- youthful in uh, repairing Warforged. <laughs> yeah. And suddenly I have a bender moment. Cough, <laughs> <laughs> The flame comes firing out. So, you will go to the path that the hacks had pointed out, or the other path? Harriel? I don't trust those hags as far as we can possibly throw them, which... Let's head south, uh, fam. Well, we're right here. Uh, is the door... That door is open? Yes. Then uh, we'll move inside, unless, unless somebody else has to uh, judge. Yeah, before we go, Jonas going to take out his cigarette and just throw in the water before, you know, anyone can smell it before we come in, you know? Actually, this whole place has a lot of smell. If that water is clean, it's like poo water, basically. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fun. So, uh, it's so the sewers. Can... It's the sewers. Yeah, yeah, it's sewer. yeah, you're right. It is sewers. Why? I didn't expect poo water, basically. <laughs> so you um, get on this uh, side of the um, of the road to the eastern way, and you start wandering through the tunnels uh, in these ruins for some time. Until um, Kovar says, wait, wait a minute. Uh, I, I think I am hearing something. When he tells you that, you notice that there is a humming sound, like someone singing with a, a very distorted voice. Kovar says, that a lullaby that my wife used to sing. Maybe we are close to her. We have to do a perception check to figure out the, di- the, the direction. direction. Yes. Yeah. No. 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 You. You don't need it. You can eventually follow the sound until you reach a very small uh, a small chamber hmm. and you hear the sound of um, someone humming here, here but luckily for you you uh, so, uh, you know here you hear the sound of someone attempting to sing with a very distorted voice and uh, when you are in here a strange war force open the door and as he sees all of you, he lets go. She lets she lets go a primordial scream, like trying to intimidating you. But looks at Kovar that is behind you and says, "Kovar, Kovar, you're here." Kovar uh, looks at all of you and says, looks especially at Emily and says, "So you are st- you is she my wife still?" That's a complicated question. Probably. He approaches the this form of war force and tells, is, is she alright? She has had a procedure done to her. A procedure I might be able to reverse. I would need a lot of tools, a lot of time, and probably a hospital. Well, she, he approaches the war force and the war force uh, looks at him with a very sad face. He hugs uh, the war force and the war force hugs him back says eh, maybe that is here and and now she, he knows that I am me cover starts to cry eh, the war force starts to make noises that may be crying too a little a little girl joins the family hug for a moment and eh, cover looks at you and say okay eh, and what we do, do we do from here I I can help you and Emily is going to take this time to basically pull out a doohickey from her bag, possibly like some sort of scanning ray or Tinker's toys, and she is going to be studying the fuck out of this woman, trying okay, to find out start, what has happened to her. You start to study her, and you notice that it's like if you had made your own surgery, but with a lot of emphasis in, augmentate, in augmentation, she is quite probably quite tough, but uh, there is no, uh, there was no care to uh, help her remain a uh, human looking or even human at all uh, you know this is the fact that outside of the head uh, there is very little uh, organic matter is oh 
but uh, organic matter. Okay, so she's most she's like seventy five percent warforged. Yes. Okay, that complicates things. Can I tell if she's being mind controlled? Mm, no, you can't tell for sure. I mm. I think I know how to fix your wife, sir. With a little bit of cosmetic alteration, she should be mostly fine. I am familiar with this procedure. I've never done it completely by myself, but I think we might be able to get your daughter or mother's face to look at it at the very least. But we can't do it here. We need somewhere safe, and I also need to make sure she's not being controlled by whoever did this to her. Uh, the war force look at, looks at you and says, no, believe me, well, I don't know if you could believe me, but I am not under those monsters' control. Those I monsters? To, yes, the ones that did, did this to me. Uh, they were There was a war force, several war forces, but we are, like, with empty eyes. And there was a woman, and there was a man, and they were doing this to other but I, I when they do it when they were doing this they do they did like something in their head and but I managed to escape before they did that to me okay so that's that's good. I think I might be able to help you, ma'am. I don't think there's much, and believe me, I, I don't know how to say this, and I want to say this in the nicest way possible. I don't think you have much flesh left, but I think I might be able to give you a normal-looking life. And in return, the only thing I ask is you tell us everything you need to know about this operation, because we wish to stop it. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Whatever you need to know, I will tell you. Let's go somewhere sterile. Perfect. Well, so you will go out of the um, ruins and into the your sky coach and from where they are, where will you go? Tell me how Stenerif has some a clean enough lab or something. How Stenerif doesn't have labs. They have hospitals though. They oh, have kinda hospitals. Need, they kind of have to. Okay, yes, I... they have hospitals and they actually they, sorry, they use, usually use a host Rasko's house of healing for very uh, grave wounds but they have like an infirmary that where they can attend tend to less um, serious injuries. I'm an artificer, not a doctor. Um, I know parts, I don't know biology. Emily. Yes. You need, you, you just need a quiet place to work. I need somewhere sanitized, I need somewhere with surgical tools, and I need somewhere safe. And possibly someone trained in heal, because I don't understand blood. That was Merrick's. <laughs> uh, Lucas, out of character. Yes. Uh, if there was a way to uh, reach out to Corona, then, uh, uh, could I requisition such a location uh, through the Arch Kendium? Uh, yes. Actually, you go to any church uh, um, of the Silver Flame, any chapel uh, or the cathedral, you can show the fact that you are working uh, for the Argentum. Uh, actually, you don't work for the Argentum. You uh, still uh, in papers figure uh, um, as a paladin. But as a paladin, you can have access to church facilities. I, I just want, I actually just want, wasn't sure if this was something that I could have done church through the Argentinium, because it, it, we're looking for a place, we're looking for like a place for uh, M surgery. Yes. And I think. You know that a lot of churches have some some place where the clerics can perform a, some a charitable a health attention, because a host churrasco that runs the uh, hospitals, they are all, um, you have to pay them and you have to pay them quite a lot. So some churches uh, to win uh, a, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of goodwill from the people, uh, do some healing uh, on the side uh, for free from gotcha. time to time. And you can go to a chapel and we'll have a place with a moderately trained healer and maybe some healing magic. Okay. If we go to House Denise, we can get uh, Meryl to pay for it for a healer from House Jurasco, we can um, sanitize a, a room to Emily's specifications. We can get all the tools needed at that point. Uh, and we are protect and basically a little bit under the radar. If we go to one of the churches, word might leak. Oh, I, I must. I, I guess I misunderstood because I thought. I thought when Emily asked, uh, I thought Lucas said that there wasn't a, a lab. There isn't a proper like... hospital inside House the Need a Stronghold, but they, a Sliver is saying that they could ask for someone from House Churrasco to go to the Stronghold. That sounds oh, like oh, a yeah. good idea. Okay. Oh, like like. We 
we we basically have battlefield surgeons and shit like that. We we aren't a uh, we're not a uh, university hospital with the best of the best of the best. We're just get them going either to a better hospital or back into battle. Is anyone so else we have we have kill. competent hands? Yes, you have. You can have someone with uh, enough uh, knowledge to keep someone alive, and you could ask from someone from from Coast Shirasco to come and assist. Uh, okay. Is anyone I, in I this only, party I, trying I, to heal? Oh, no, no. Definitely not. No, I, I, I had a leadership position. I was not the I was not the squad medic. Well, then why do I you like... know how to get blood out of people? I don't know how to get it back in. <laughs> actually, actually, I have I mean, plus two in medicine, if you're interested. I we, think it's probably we need someone with more than plus. How about you? How about we head to House Denise? I'll do what I can. You contact my aunt Corona. Have her send someone over. Uh, actually, I should be able to assist. Uh, I didn't include my backstory, but I'm looking at my character sheet, and I am proficient in medicine. Uh, oh yeah. God! Thankfully. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, well, it, uh, actually, it has sense. Maybe you didn't. You are on uh, the whole the um, squad uh, physician, but uh, maybe you learn to eventually patch yourself up and you are like when you are deep in enemy territory. This is mostly oh, yeah. a mechanical issue, but I just I want to make sure she doesn't bleed out on the table. If you can do well, that, that then thank you. Fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I should be able to do it. Let's so, get her to a clean room. Back to close the need? Yes. In that case, um, in there you will have to make, you will have to actually um, doing the whole process to make her look human will take you a week entirely an entire week of war, at least. Em em so Emily's willing to do this, not just out of the kindness of her heart, but also because uh, she wants to learn as much as she can about what Marix has been doing to these people. I'm not dissecting uh, her, but I am uh, dissecting her. If you her. want, you can start right now. <laughs> uh, Harriel's also down to spending the entire week doing this, uh, mainly because it should be one family that should be properly done. Very. I want to find out, I want to um, give a family their mother uh, back, and I want to find out what the hell he been doing with my research. So, close the need, and you will spend uh, the next week working in, in, in this woman back to you uh, uh, to check. It's a healing check. It will be difficult. A DC 10. Uh, <laughs> oh, Alright, so the first is a medicine check? Yes, DC 10 to her alive. Would you like to drop a bless before you roll that check? Never mind. Well, now you, you will manage to give her a stay during the procedure and uh, what skill are you using to repair her? I assume that would be my tinker's tools or my arcana? Living tools. Yes, I think tinker tools. Alright. Uh... Oh, if you, are doing, if you are using tinker tools, Sliver can actually help. If you... Yeah, sure. I'll come help. If he can okay, throw so me in an advantage. Alright. Well, I need that okay. 26. This is my Ooh. fucking work. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sliver actually helps you uh, more than what you, you were expecting. I mean, turns your 15 into a 26. Um, and you start to... Uh, well, Sliver, you notice that the fact that inside, she's a warforged. The only thing that it's weird about her is the fact that his, her brain and spinal and spine are human. Um, all the other parts are warforged. And she has... I am, a, uh, she I has am seriously a, disgusted by what I see. And she has some sort of weird tanks and pump inside of her that pumps something similar to blood to her brain. Um, Emily, you managed to see that this thing in front of you is a more aggressive form of what you have uh, undergo, but uh, it's like they try to make the Warforged body and put a person inside the Warforged uh, instead of replacing piece by piece slowly over time. So eventually you both get to the point in which you ask for Warforged parts, uh, spare parts, and luckily for you, uh, House the Need has several Warforged. Uh, one of them he, uh, likes to identify herself as a woman, so she has a womanish looking body. You give, he you give her that, and you use the same technology that you use to create the fake skin in your face to make her a uh, fake face uh, based on the 
description that you have from his cousin and uh, from and looking a little uh, to the face of uh, her daughter. You give her fake hair and um, she will have to keep coming uh, every month to have um, some skin uh, patches uh, put on her. It's actually a very this very good work uh, from the outside and when she's clothed, uh, it's almost impossible to notice uh, the fact that she's not a human any longer. So her compared to me, because I'm assuming I replaced a little bit less than just my brain. Like, I still have, like, a normal face and, like, normal organs. Am I able to tell that, like, he basically just ripped a brain out and put it in an inert inert warforged? Or or is this, like... It's based on what you did, but it's a, a more brute force approach. Oh, I'm taking a lot of notes. Uh, well, uh, 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 give me an arcana check that could give you some insight, uh, some uh, additional insight. Oh, oh. That's a 20. 20? You actually notice another thing that um, some of the spells that they used to manage to keep her alive uh, were necromancy spells. Oh, so she's dead? No, but they use some magic, uh, some necromantic magic to make the transition possible. Huh. Well, I'm fairly certain my heart is still beating, even if it's inside a yes, case Yes, yes, right your now. heart is still beating. She doesn't have a heart, she has a pump. Mm. But maybe they used the necromancy in the moment in which she was only a brain, uh, a head with a spine, uh, to keep her alive or something like that. Uh, you think that maybe if you have a necromancer, you could do some things that you didn't dare to use on yourself uh, before because, well, it includes dying for a little time. All right, well, I'll, I'll try my best uh, to work on the cosmetic thing, try to make sure she isn't leaking oil or anything. No, 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 she's actually... You have a 26. Yeah, it's actually a piece of power. Perfect. All right. Um, well, you spend a week doing that. Hariel, uh, you left, uh, you leave uh, Violet uh, standing and, or you go visit her in the soup kitchen. Did I? Oh, and that's the wrong button. I don't know why that popped up. Uh, did I get, did, before that, did I get a report? Oh, yes. Back from- you ask for a report. I will see how good were the instigators. Oh, so you know, I'll take you a dossier. Uh, she is actually a, a journalist from the Inquisitor of Shan, but she also has a second identity. Uh, a, uh, oh, a pen name actually, more than a second identity. She publishes some uh, more controversial notes uh, in a in the form of pamphlets that they are distributed. Uh, from unknown sources uh, and she has used that to uncover a couple of cases of corruption uh, actually one of the members of the Argento mentions that they had used her to filter information uh, about uh, corrupt officials uh, uh, things like that to the general population um, she used to be a war correspondent respondent is a uh, a war journalist, right? A war journalist uh, during the Great War. Um, she is. Uh, her father was also a journalist during the Great War, but uh, he died uh, during the morning. Um, and you, the and other than that, you know where where she lives. She doesn't have a family right now, uh, except a brother that works in uh, as an in an office uh, for for the government of Sham. Okay. So I know we I, I know I only ha- uh, we only had time for movie days. Uh, but aside from that information, uh, as far as the report goes, is does she have any link any uh, any of the major or minor powers in Sharp? Mm, no. Uh, she has contacts in many places, uh, but her main uh, for 
pursuit or ambition eats the news. She's actually quite dedicated to the newspaper, to the Inquisitor. Okay. Um, before I go, before I go and meet her, um, I will. I'm going to bring everybody up speed with that dossier, and I'm letting them know that I'm going to go meet her and start trading information with her. Because as far as as far as uh, as far as um the church was able to uh tell uh tell me, it does seem like Violet is relatively trustworthy. So I'm letting the group know, and I will go and help out at that soup kitchen so that uh we can have uh so we can have that discussion afterwards. Wow. Yeah, I'm going later. Damn, I, I had something in it. Damn, I forgot it. You're right. In any case, so yeah, um, head over to the soup kitchen, uh, and just and uh, just spend the morning doing what uh, doing uh, what we normally do, and afterwards, wherever Violet wants to go, I will follow, provided it's a openly public place. We, I don't trust her well enough to go to start start going to hold wall. Perfect. Well, so you uh, go to the soup kitchen. Uh, she um appears there too and helps you out uh, for some time. She doesn't seem to be good at manual labor uh, and cooking but she is quite nice to people uh, in a weird way, like cheerful. Uh, so uh, mostly in organizing the lines uh, and, the, and the people to receive uh, their food. Their food. And after a couple, couple of hours of doing that, uh, when and the soup kitchen closes uh, its doors uh, for the morning. Uh, she asks you if you want to take a sky coat uh, and go to this little coffee shop. Um, Ariel, uh, Ariel uh, agrees, and we'll go with her to said coffee shop. Uh, well, was it that pl- was it that place in the middle city? Said no, before? it's in the Ocean View. Ocean View, it's like some place over here. Um, it's oh okay somewhere in tab okay you go there uh, when you go there you notice that you are quite underdressed to the place everybody is super fancy and uh, have the latest fashions etc and she is relatively well dressed you are moderately well dressed but uh, you notice the fact that some people look at you uh, look at her like oh okay adventures um, but she appears to know uh, the people of the um, of the coffee shop and ask uh, for the special of the house. You sit down and one of the um, the waiters uh, approaches you. They serve you a, a bowl uh, with some cream on it, and one of them approaches to you with a small dragon on his hand right. and says, "Well, this is the specialty of the house, dragon creme brulee." Oh, I actually thought something else there. <laughs> Oh, oh, that is completely different. I was, I was about to do a whole bunch of inside checks. I thought this guy was some type. Of... Okay, <laughs> ah. sorry, <laughs> I miss, miss, uh, miss spoke. Miss, well, uh, oh no, you, you, you said you weren't wrong. The dragon is on the waiter's hand. I yes. just interpreted that as, oh, he's got a dragon tattoo on his hand. That, no, no, he has a gang small symbol. dragon. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's like a blowtorch, you know, man. Yes, well. <laughs> They serve you that, um, and when the other, uh, oh, uh, I always wanted to try this. Um, I one of my friends in the Inquisitor made an entire note uh, about this place, and well, uh, he owed me a favor, and I asked it, and I really want to know uh, what what's your deal. I mean, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you rescued uh, the charm equivalent of a princess. Uh, um, later, you are there doing, uh, helping the the poor to defend themselves uh, from the depredations of the city. And I mean, I think that people need uh, need to have this kind of examples in life. That's why I am annoying you. It's impressive that you're so focused on what possible good found in Shark. I, I what usually the type of story that come from the uh, from
from uh from your paper are more bombastic than you know whole yes i know and i actually had to write a lot of dark gritty things about uh, bad things that happen but when something good happens in a while i actually like to share that um i think that it's important to show people the contrast within light and darkness that's an intake uh to be had but if you were just focused on a bunch of good cemetery work you will just focus your the nature of your stories would just focus on that the ultimate benefit the community and sharon as whole you wouldn't necessarily be having be asking so many times such acts well a uh, thing is i want to tell a story about noble heroes doing noble actions but i also don't like to share lies so i want to know <laughs> the reasons that motivate you and mostly i have the other side of the coin heroes happen or are almost always related to villains at so, this at this uh uh i'm assuming at this point we got like some coffee or something yes you, you with have us, uh, coffee you have creme brulee uh yeah. you have a nice ocean view so uh harry will, uh, for a beat harry goes and takes quite uh, a small uh a small sip of her coffee and put, puts it down and she'll then uh uh like put her hands on the table and just lean forward and she's going to fix file with, with a stare as she says then let me ask you this this interest in Helen in heroes versus villains yes is this Violet the intrepid reporter asking or is this Violet uh Violet as and I and I state her pen name asking because one is very different than the other hmm that's actually a good question I have been doing this job enough to define myself as a reporter almost always first uh, so it, there is a little of that uh, but there is a little of Violet, the child that likes to read stories about Silver Flame Paladin. When you say that, uh, one skeptic eyebrow raise. Like, she, like she's, she's got that whole raised eyebrow thing, all, as if to say, really, all of this for a Silver Flame Paladin? No, but, the, I mean, the entire group is interesting, but the reason that I choose you is a little less professional, maybe? Eyebrow raises that much higher. She proceeds to take a long sip of coffee, looking at you directly. I am going to wait out this awkward silence. This has become a game of chicken, and I w- <laughs> she will crack first. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. You guys are out Canadian each other. <laughs> <laughs> One must be the most Canadian of the all. If the other should... turns him... <laughs> She, the other must be American. Eventually she loses because she is actually quite uh, accustomed to never stop talking. <laughs> and... <laughs> In fact, you know what? I want... I. I... I don't know if you want to classify this as a as a performance or an intimidation, but I I want to use this awkward silence to pressure her in making first move. Cause okay, she, I will she's... say I, you could use intimidation or you could use persuasion. Any any one goes well. <laughs> I'm proficient in intimidation. You are you are not going to. Oh. I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. Why? Yep. Why did I tempt roll twenty here? Rip. <laughs> you try to intimidate her, and you start to get nervous. <laughs> uh, man, I, I know, I know well enough not to tempt roll twenty. Okay. Uh... <laughs> okay. She looks oh. at you and smiles a lot, uh, and eventually she says, "Like, okay, look." I, as I say, have said before, it's not my intention to annoy you, uh, but I just wanted to know you a little better. Uh, be a, anything that you want to share, uh, or maybe if you don't want, uh, we could just share this coffee that we be all. Ariel takes a moment to uh, takes a moment and just gives a sigh, and and after after catching herself, uh, Violet, if you want, if you want to talk, yes. to, to trade information, I don't mind up with you. Okay. And 
discussing certain details, but that's only work as far as trust what I tell. You. Okay. If if there is something I if there is something I decline to elaborate on, I want you to understand that very why I am not I may not be giving more. Okay, we could we could work with that. And to be fair, we're always look volunteer on. We're always looking for volunteers at. So is that a date? If you ever if you ever need me for if you ever if you're coming to me for a fish statement, that's one. And would prefer if you go from if you're looking for if, if you're looking for uh off the record, off the cuff comment, then we can chat then we can chat while we're packing away the uh packing away the ladles and other kitchen kitchenette stuff. I assuming that I'm not out somewhere on on other duties, I'm always helping the church out with various volunteer work. I make it a point to be there. Uh the uh soup okay. we can always ch- we can always chat uh chat. Mm, I, I could I could make that work. So All right. I was asking tell me what you can tell me. I will not ask too many questions to avoid you having to deny things or that sort of things. What can you tell me so, about Merrick in this moment? She actually says Merrick? Yes. God, it's like two steps forward, one step back here. Damn. Okay. Yes. She's not an easy person. No, it's not that. that none of us mentioned Merrick. None of us. <laughs> yes, that means but... this person reli- knows has some contacts. You rescued... Uh, actually, if you ask... Well, no, if you ask her, maybe she can tell you why she knows that. But she asks, what can you tell me about Merrick's and all of this? Uh, it's not an intimidation check, but the moment she does say Merrick, uh, Ariel is going to give her a very hard stare. He will raise an eyebrow. Uh, Ariel is going to take this as, you know, uh, while it's showing off her avenues of communication. Okay. Well, some of the events that has occurred within the last month have gotten the attention of certain parties in Sean. Because of Merrick's possible involvement. Uh, to that point, there are several groups are making inquiries into Merrick's actions as of late. I'd like to imagine she, you're saying that very slowly and you're like watching all of your words. She takes notes. But I would like to stress that these are th- that uh, regardless of what rumors that are currently out, these groups are just making inquiries and she will stress inks. Okay, so right now you are limited to say uh, do you want me to give all this off record? Well, I will tell you what uh, uh, she doesn't, uh, you notice that the fact that she's likely an anxious kind of person, uh, and she doesn't wait for your answer says, well, uh, the the heir to Merrick has decided to leave uh, her house and took refuge in a, a, the need a strong after an attempt of kidnapping murder, uh, kidnapping or maybe murder, uh, you have helped her reach the the neat house and you are now investigating something about Merrick. So I it, it's not so much of a leap to assume that you're working for his daughter uh, and it's not that much of a leap to consider that it has to do something with the disappearances, the kidnappings of the girls in High Wall because when you are asking about the kidnapped girls, you ask about uh, if they had information about Merrick's, but you actually ask some weird questions, like, for example, if those girls had the same body proportions of one of the members of your group, that... When, when Violet says that, uh, me a lot. Ha- uh, Harriel will... She's going to be very deliberate with her as she takes a... Uh, as she takes a nurse for coffee, and Harriel responds, there were... Sir, there are... In regards to the disappearing... Or disappearing girl. Uh, that is, that is some hearsay. The real reason you were looking at hearing girls was as an avenue to track down Merrick. Okay. Because we were, because of the fact that since such it's, it happened to Merrick's family, uh, Merrick's daughter, when we came, when it came to our attention that Merrick was, uh, not in Sharn, we were, we were, we received less than helpful ways of being able to communicate such into, uh, Merrick, because, because naturally, a father should be made aware of uh, any happening daughter. And any talk, rumor, uh, 
off the cut statement about about uh, about missing about missing girl and their likenesses is just that just off the cuff statements. Make a deception check. See, this is why Emily doesn't have charisma. She cannot talk like this at all. <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. She looks at you, not entirely convinced, but she nods and says, "Okay, I uh, I, I don't want to annoy to keep uh, with this. I have enough to at least cover uh, the that intervention." But if you want, I can tell simply that you stumble upon uh, that. In... Yes, I will. I will share what you said. Well, you told me if that's what you want. That's that is more than fair, especially since well, I'm going to go out on them and ask a favor. Okay. And in return for the favor, I will see if I can get you more pertinent information. Story. How familiar are you with the City Watch captain camera? Oh. Yes, I am. I have some pending investigations on him, so. All I'm asking is if it's possible, uh, since Hammer is, uh, ha uh since Hammer is City, uh, City Watch, we've been having, right now, we, we uh, Hammer is uh, out of town, and we haven't been able to reach him. Yet. If there, if you could uh, look into some places he went, maybe talk to some associates there, that, and ask them if there are ways to them that they could, you know, uh, Get a message out to uh, Mr. Hammer. All, all I'm really asking for is the location pe uh, of people he would normally speak. To. I will give you that. I will give you that. But I will give you that in exchange for one uh, considerable favor and one very small favor. Go on. The considerable favor is that I will uh, ask you if you could give me the list of the houses in which the girls uh, were sold. Uh, the Inquisitor won't allow me to share that uh, information, but I could leak it in some way. I think that we both agree that people that buy people should be exposed. It's not that I want to say no. I definitely need to check see if that is something. I need to check the rest of the case. Such Perfectly understandable. Totally understandable. And the second very small favor is that if I could like personally give you this list of details and we could, I don't know, go for a walk. Uh, I don't have any trouble with helping the soup kitchen from time to time. I think that uh, my soul or something like that will like it, but uh, if I was thinking maybe we could have a second date in a more um, in a nicer environment. Got you. But, oh, no, 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 no. When she says, when Harry says, got you, she says, she says it jokingly oh. because this was a, uh, Harry responds, I thought this was just a I, I thought this was just an outing to discuss. I didn't call this a date, Violet. And oh. she and she and as she's saying that she give uh she's giving Violet like a very like uh joking grin because Harry knows what Harry I know what she's doing, but I <laughs> I wasn't going to acknowledge it as a date, but she called it first. Yes. Okay. Uh, you got me. Uh, well, I have to have a life and having a life and being a reporter sometimes collide and I find that, uh, well, sometimes, let me have, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to make all of things awkward. I will keep you information. You notice that she starts to, uh, she um, stands up and, like, starts to retreat. I will give you information that you need. I didn't mean to make this awkward. I am so terribly sorry. Um... I know Harry, that you have as, job to do. As Violet is saying all this, Hyrule is just fixing her with like the with that Cheshire grin of just 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 keep tumbling over your words. I, I'm perfectly fine with all this. Just keep tumbling. <laughs> okay, so see you later. And she retreats. Well, she uh, starts to walk away. So, uh, so with that being done, uh, actually, uh, we I can role play that later because uh, I still have to talk with Miss Hall about that. But at the very least, I need to talk with house about that for that say once she is out of once she's out of a uh, out of sight in fact yeah um can i roll perception to make sure that she's actually out of sight oh yeah 
Yes, she is. This time. Great. Um, where is the nearest war memorial? Uh, the, ah, the war memorial. Uh, you have some. Almost each district have some wall, some small war memorial, but you have uh, one uh, going exactly down from when you are uh, in the Cape Town. You have a war memorial uh, that uh, to 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 the soldier. Okay, so until. Uh, evening time when the sun's are, when the sun's fully set, uh, Harriel will spend her time at the war memorial. Uh, uh, while and as she's uh sitting at the memorial, she'll be uh fingering her uh her collection of dog tags. But Shona, uh, they had spent a week fixing up um, the war forged lady. Uh, so you have a week uh, to do what you whatever you wanted. I don't know if you want to use that to. You could use that to work and make some coin. You could use that to look information or whatever you choose to do. Uh, Jones could go check his PO box real quick. Okay. Uh, see if anything came in the mail. Uh, were you, what were you expecting your mail? Uh, like anything, anything that comes in, you know. There are people that are still looking for you uh, for work uh, relating mostly uh, cases of divorce. Uh, the, the classic um, some people want uh, to have some information about uh, some of their business partners uh, to see if they have made uh, deals behind the box so you could take one of those cases if you wanted uh, I'm gonna yeah, I, I might actually yeah, take up you know another divorce case for like get cash you know perfect uh, make an investigation check alright hold on a second Okay, so uh, you are uh, out in this case, and you actually manages to find that uh, the husband was trying to uh, pass one of uh, his properties to uh, uh, to one of his brothers to avoid uh, the property fall uh, in the in the divorce in the in the partition of goods. Uh, so you actually managed to make uh, to avoid the wife to lose a lot of money in the, the divorce, so she will pay you an extra 30 piece gold uh, as a bonus for a job well done. Nice. That's good, yeah. Very good. Uh, uh, so anything else? Uh, would I know where that guards woman is? Uh, Alice? Oh, Alice uh, is uh, one of the guards working in Highwall. She's go he's gonna go check up on her, you know, see how things are with her. Okay, well, actually, if you check on her, uh, she's quite more comfortable now because um, the fact that many people of High Wall have seen her and your party uh, together has helped her to make associations and uh, like a good name for uh, like a present. Uh, she has used that as a presentation. Like, oh yes, I also know them. They help me. Blah blah blah. And she's quite more comfortable uh, walking the streets of High Wall. Uh, and has begun to make um, a little of crosswork uh, between the watch in High Wall and the militias of the Syrian refugees. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's actually better better off than the last time that you have seen her. Uh, the only thing that if, if you go to visit her, she will tell you that there have been um, two persons uh, asking about your group. One uh, appears to be a journalist from the Inquisitor, uh, the Shar Inquisitor, and the other one was um, a, a pale uh, looking lady that she was quite well dressed and was asking around. Um, many people had shared information with the Inquisitor woman, but the white, uh, the pale lady, uh, look, uh, most people choose to share very little with her so uh, it would be good Joan's gonna ask uh, Alice about the pale lady like what's with her deal uh, she was weird uh, she looked like a noble but um, she was slightly awkward she came um, uh, late uh, during the evening uh, and she asked about um, 
the people that had turned the girls uh, to the to the houses and asked if um, if the people that rescued the girls had some information about oh yes that was the weird thing she was quite fixated on the fact that three girls hadn't returned uh, and she asked if uh, people knew uh, what happened to the three girls that didn't come back uh, you know that the three girls that didn't come back were the ones that uh, were in the uh, in the slave trader house yeah. so she's asking about that right yes she sa- was asking about that and well people when she started to ask about that people uh, told uh, told uh, her that they didn't know anything about that uh, mm-hmm. and well she went away odd, odd. Yeah. did she did she look like she was a part of any house or is she kind of like a independent party independent party she she said that she was working for an inquisitive agent agency uh, there are agencies that look people up and etc some some sort of like you a private mm. investigator oh. but she didn't look like one I mean most private investigators uh, like you have an ability to make people at ease and ask things when you ask things and she was actually quite pushy you know you know how old people are they get very no nose on things you know yes 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 I know I know yeah Well, uh, take care. Uh, anything, if you need anything, well, if you need anything in high wall, <laughs> uh, you know where to find me. Yeah, I, I get it. Well, if you need me, you know, actually, here's my P.O. box if you need, need me, you know? Oh. Jonah's, yeah, Jonah gives her the matchbook. Perfect. All right. All right, see you around, Alice. I'm going to go back to my uh, associates. Bye-bye. All right. So, you will gather after this week of work. Mm. How does she look? Do? And how is her reaction when her family sees her? She looks quite well. Uh, her family sees her, and it's quite happy. It's a very sweet moment that you have a small victory in all of this. Uh, she's reunited with her family, uh, and they see quite relieved that they are together again. Oh, thank God. Tell me the rest of you got something done this week, because I have not been able to sleep for the past three days. Well, I, well, I was uh, doing some business. Mostly just usual stuff, you know, divorce cases, you know. I mean, anything my, money related but... to all the kidnappings that have been happening. Oh, you know, I was talking to... You, you remember Alice, right? Which one is that? Uh, the... Uh, Sliver, you know who Alice was, right? Well, she was, you know, the guardswoman we met yes. by the refugee. Yeah, well, uh, apparently, there's just a, from what I've heard, another investigator looking into, like, what we're doing right now. It's it really lot, weird. There's a lot of people looking into what we're doing right now. Her father's No, put, like, no, it's, like, I mean, like, it's like a weird, pale woman, in a way. And she was asking about, the, like, the three missing girls we didn't find. It was just... Something off about it. Uh, she was uh, so well. Basically, she was uh, that woman was asking any information about that. So Is she a that might ha- well. That's kind of a complicated thing. She's from what I've heard. She's a bit off. You know what I'm saying? Who's pushy on like how on the information? You know, she was just trying to buy information out of people. Basically, you, you know what I'm saying, right? Kind of, I suppose. It's, I don't know. Something, something way off. Because so, is it something we need to worry about right now, or I don't think we need to worry about it right now. It's, it's something I'm we'll saying... keep in mind for sure. Yeah, I might look into it myself, maybe. Yeah. Well, if you need help, let us know. If you're helping me regain my wrongs. I'm more than happy to help you. I'll be. I'll be the rest of you guys. What have you guys been doing? Uh, Harold turned Emily and actually, wait. Everybody's here. Sliver. Everybody yeah. should be here right now. Yeah. Sliver yeah. just. Says his mic muted. Yeah, I'm here. As as for me, uh, after after helping you out with the family, I've been waiting on the I went been waiting on the contact to get back. Uh, what kind of contact? Violet. Th- that day after that day after I helped you, I helped with the surgery. Uh, well, actually no. Remember how remember how I told Violet that uh, three days later, uh, meet up with me over at the at the weekly kitchen. We had a interesting conversation over. At over at that cafe, she wanted to take us all at where she mentioned Merrick's name and demonstrated her information. That's still quite impressive. Also, she tried to ask me out. Well, did you accept? I think we have more and more information to read about than a cursory deli. And more importantly, I'm in the process of negotiate, negotiating a uh, uh, transfer of information. Her that sounds and notorious. I... Yeah, be careful with uh, those reporter types, they're a bit off, you know, which is why I've asked her. I've uh, asked the favor as a test sort. Uh, I asked her to get. 
I actually reply us with with a uh, listing of uh, hammers, haunts, and tied away that that we could use to investigate uh, later on before hammers back. He did ask for something in return, and I and I sliver. I need to get Hal's opinion on the information before I can uh, before I can return. Speak with Torland. Fair enough. Go. I'll go and act later. Aside from that, I have I really haven't been making progress on that. Hopefully, if Hal's niece gives the okay, we'll have a listing of place where uh, hammer frequents. We start investigating those house. Indeed. So that's our next objective then, Hammer. What about you? What about you, Sliver? And is uh, is Furball here? Like, do we see Furball? Yes. He's no. He's on patrol right now. Oh yeah, that's true. He has some work. Um, I any w- w- uh, any waking moment I didn't spend helping Emily. I spent basically working with uh, my like friend, the master of the armory. So yeah, uh, I hope I earned some money from that. No, in this case, uh, the fixing fixing this woman was a quite long job. Or did did he happen to sell any of my the finished pieces? Yeah, I think that she, he already paid for that the late the last time you rolled. Uh, well, that was for that that month. Has yeah. he sold anything this week? Yeah, give me a check. With Tinker In any case, not only did we save a family, we learned a shitload. He's not doing yeah, what I... Actually, you... Oh, I forgot about something, because you are a, 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 an entire week with this woman. Uh, she has some idea of where... Uh, when she, she ran away from a lab, she has some idea of where the area of that is. Oh, she does? Yes. And where would that? Where were these horrible people who did this to you? Um, they are below the um, uh, Gate Gold Tenement District uh, in the Cox. Uh, it was actually in the same area that uh, that she used to work. Like the same building or just the same district? It's in the same district, but maybe even be the same building because uh, she ran away through a serious tunnels. But when she get out of there, uh, she was close to a uh, tower that's run by war horses that was quite close to her factory and well her factory is close up to outsiders so I give her a piece of paper and quill and ask her to give us general directions. Yes, she can give you general directions. You could explore that area and see if you find something. I think that's much more imminent than tracking Hammer right now, if we have an actual location of where Merrix is doing all this bullshit. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you that immediately, but... It's alright. I need you to keep yourself calm. It'll help keep the Augs in place. You are mostly Warforged right now, but as long as you keep enough makeup on, you should be able to make it back to your previous life. And the poison resistance is a bit of a boon. <laughs> well, so you have that, uh, Intel? Harold, Jonah, you want to go raid some evil artificers? Hold up. Uh, I rolled Tinker Tools. Well, uh, yeah, or to see if you have some, income. some money. I rolled them. Oh, yeah, that will give you uh, seven gold pieces. Yeah, pays for a new axe. <laughs> so, for the piggy bank, you know. You have uh, this opportunity, you have this the possible location you have uh you can wait to see if you can if you invest can investigate a little more about hammer uh, 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 we, we still have some time uh, we still got we have a week uh, until hammer's back so we yeah. can go and take care of these RFIs first and then uh go and check out the cow bingo could i just could i just ask something um I, I, I completely spaced about it uh before when we got back to house denise could i have asked um the house intelligence to like put up a dossier about Hammer. Yes, uh, they don't specialize in, in in intelligence gathering, but they have some intelligence gathering. Uh, they can tell you that Hammer, uh, it's quite it's working for host uh, Canid. That's something that you already knew. Um, he has uh, several cases of uh, police corruption on his belt. Um, he's considered a moderate threat in possible combat. So he's uh, because he is a war veteran and he was the commander of the unit. Um, what else will house uh, can it house the need? The need also knows that uh, he could they could contact some of the rival.
themselves that have a house in the watch and they know that he has some contacts with the Boromar clan, uh, the Halstein Mafia. Uh, they know actually what contacts he has with the Boromar Mafia, so you could try that and for information. There's no information about his um, ho- home or favorite haunts, anything like that? It wasn't considered important at the moment, uh, and they don't gather that much intel on everybody. All right, thank you. Let's go for the lab. <laughs> okay, so you are going to go to the area of the lab. Uh, how much time do you have uh, for playing? Because I have the day off today. Uh, I wouldn't mind just like ending it here, to be honest. Yeah, we could also just call it here. Yes, yeah. because uh, the lab part, uh, let's say that might include some combat. <laughs> yeah. Some combat, you know. A little. I'm told to can do one, but I, uh, I do have to get No, back don't worry. Uh, people need to sleep. It's okay yeah. to put your health. Uh... <laughs> I had fun regardless. Yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. I, I'd I love finally to turn got. On my... No, no, you go ahead. I said I, I said I just want to turn on my fan, but I can't when I'm recording. Is it really that loud? Yes, it's. It's very loud. But Do I'm not hear that? And... No, I don't. Cause it's because I'm looking at my friggin' recording software and it's picking up my fan. So I'm like, oh. no, I don't want to turn that on when I'm recording. Wait. Well, uh, I have enjoyed the, the game too. Um, yeah, I'm really uh, invested in this story. <laughs> it's a breath of fresh, a breath of fresh air for me. Oh, thank you. So air me. Yeah. <laughs> Go kill and burn. Plus, I'm finally getting rid of like 20 matchbooks Jonah has. <laughs> Did you literally buy 20 matchbooks in character creation? I'm. It's it's part of a character core I'm doing right now. I'm like, fuck. Jonah has like 40 matchbooks with his pisses on it. <laughs> Cool. I like it. Uh, thanks. So, uh, see you next. We will see you next week, and we can continue with this. Awesome! Can't wait. TCY. All right. All right. See you later, everybody. See you later. Right, see you later. Yeah.